If you like the idea of meal prep and having fast healthy meals all week, but maybe you get bored of eating the same thing every single day, then you might want to try flexible meal prep. I am going to be showing you how to do flexible meal prep in the easiest way possible. This is the kind of meal prep that I do most often. Meal prep doesn't have to be that complicated. Essentially, it's just food cooked ahead of time to eat later. Just in case you're new to flexible meal prep, basically there's two kinds of meal prep. Fully prepped meal prep and flexible meal prep. Fully prepped is where you make the whole meal, put it into a container and it's ready to go. This is great if you have your whole week mapped out and you know exactly which meals you want prepared. Flexible meal prep is where you prepare all of the core ingredients and then just put them together on the day. This works well if you want more freedom to mix and match depending on what you feel like eating on the day. I like to meal prep because obviously it saves me so much time throughout the week and it helps me to keep making healthy food choices. Like if I've prepped vegetables, there's no excuse not to eat them. I actually find myself enjoying them more. If you just want to save time, you could get fast food, but the fastest way to get really healthy food is to meal prep it yourself. I found in the past that the biggest challenge with meal prep is if you choose the wrong ingredients or the wrong combination of ingredients, it can just end up taking way more time, wasting time and even wasting the food. So I think the most important thing that we want with flexible meal prep is a balance of bland and flavorful foods so that you don't get bored of them and so that you have a good combination of flavors where everything goes together. And some more obvious ones, ingredients that go with a lot of things, foods that keep well, things that are quick to prepare and a good balance of nutrients. So I know that's a lot of stuff to remember and it can get really complicated. So to make this really simple, I've come up with something that I call a flexible meal prep set, which is a group of foods that already go really well together. I'll be showing you eight of my favorite foods for flexible meal prep. I've specifically chosen these eight items because they have a great balance of nutrition, they keep well, and together they can be combined in a lot of different ways. If you meal prep all of these ingredients at the start of the week, you can throw these meals together so quickly. There's a lot of different variation here. There's a lot of different flavor combinations so that you won't get bored. So in the first half of the video, I'm gonna show you how to make and prep these eight core ingredients. And in part two, we're gonna be making 10 different meals with those ingredients. I'll show you exactly how to build nutritious meals for yourself using these simple and flexible ingredients. You can put all these meals together in under five minutes. They're all gluten and dairy free. There will be vegan options for anything that's not vegan, don't worry. And I know some of you following me are looking for weight loss friendly meals. There will be some portion and calorie gardens if you're looking for that. Otherwise, you can serve however much you want in the moment. So before you start, lay out all of your ingredients, get your meal prep containers ready and make sure you start with the items that take the longest to cook and then work your way down. This is the number one thing that I always do. It saves me so much time overall. I really love the first item because it's so simple, but it can be used in so many different ways to add a lot of flavor to different meals. I'm using 450 grams of grape tomatoes. You can use any type of small tomatoes like cherry tomatoes. I drizzle about two teaspoons of oil. I use avocado oil. You can use any type of oil and two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar over the tomatoes, some black pepper and salt too. Add that to an oven preheated to about 360 degrees Fahrenheit or about 180 degrees Celsius for about 40 to 60 minutes. It depends on the oven you have. All ovens are a bit different, but I did about 60 minutes. Once the vinegar roasted the tomatoes have cooled down after cooking, you can store them in an airtight container in the fridge to keep them fresh. You can make whatever quantity you like, you can double or halve any of the ingredients I'll be showing you today to make a bigger or smaller quantity. Later in this video, I'll show you some different ways that you can easily use these vinegar roasted tomatoes in various different meals. I'm opening two cans of black beans, draining and rinsing them, and then adding them to a bowl with one tablespoon of cooking oil. I use avocado, you can use any type. Now you can add any spices that you like. What I like to use is some onion powder, a tiny pinch of cane pepper, some paprika, I like to use a lot of paprika, and some salt and pepper. Mix all of that together and spread it out over a baking tray and add it to an oven preheated to 360 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for about 60 minutes. So you can roast the tomatoes and the black beans at the same time. 
This item doesn't look like much, but it's actually one of my favorites because it adds a lot of flavor to meals and it's full of protein and fiber too. Once it's cooled down after cooking, you can store it in an airtight container in the fridge to keep it fresh. I like to make a really big batch of this because I use a lot of it. I'm using four medium red bell peppers. You can use any color, I love the red ones. I like to cut them up into biggish pieces and then you can also cut up some purple onion. You can use any kind of onion. This has been one of my favorite vegetable combinations for years because it is super versatile. There's so much you can do with it and it really couldn't be more simple. You can double or half the amounts that I've used to make however much you like and I'm using three medium to large onions. Peel them, cut them up into biggish pieces too and I mix all of the chopped peppers and onions between two baking trays. To that I add about two teaspoons of cooking oil per baking tray so about four in total for all of the vegetables I used and then I add a bit of salt and pepper toss everything together. You can add some chili flakes to this which I do sometimes but today I'm gonna keep it really simple so that it's really versatile and can be used with lots of different things. Then I add the trays to an oven preheated to 360 degrees Fahrenheit about 180 degrees celsius again and roast them for about 40 to 50 minutes i usually do 40 minutes and once they're cooked you can let them cool down before storing the roasted onion and pepper into airtight containers and the fridge to keep them fresh So this is one of my go-to ways of cooking chicken for meal prep because it's something you can use in a lot of different ways. And I'll give you a vegan option for this in a moment too. Here I'm using about two pounds of skinless boneless chicken breast meat. In my case that worked out to being about four chicken breasts. I place them in a baking dish and cover them with one tablespoon of cooking oil. The reason I use avocado oil is because it has a higher smoke rate, so it's really great for cooking with. Then I add about three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar and some salt and pepper and toss the chicken around in that. You can place that in an oven, again preheated to about 360 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Celsius for about 20 to 30 minutes. Or as you need, I do 30 minutes in my oven. You can cook the chicken at the same time as you cook the peppers and the onions as their cooking time is quite similar. You can cut into one of them to check that it's done before removing it from the oven. And once they've cooled down, you can either store them whole or you can slice them up before storing. I'm just slicing them up to make it really easy to grab and go. And you can drizzle some of the meat juice over the chicken too if you like to. For a vegan option, you can use extra firm tofu. You can cut it into cubes and toss it in the same ingredients before baking. Just check the brand that you use for cooking times because they all differ and you can store that in an airtight container in the fridge to keep it fresh. This is such a basic thing to meal prep, but it's such an important item for me. When you meal prep, you really wanna make sure you've got a mix of bland and basic items to go with your flavorful items so that you can create a lot of variety with meals. I'm using three cups of dry brown rice and about five to six cups of hot water. The water to rice ratio can be brand dependent, so just check the brand that you've got. I usually use one and a half to two cups of water for each cup of rice. I get that cooking on the stove and let it simmer for about 40 minutes. Brown rice takes quite a long time to cook, so I pretty much don't eat it if I don't meal prep it. Quinoa and white rice are actually much quicker to cook. Both of them take roughly 15 minutes instead of 40. You can do quinoa right now instead of the brown rice. And you can make as much rice as you like. You can make more, you can make less, however much you think you will need for the week. This will be good for me this week. And when it's cooled down, I store it in a big airtight container and keep it in the fridge to keep it fresh. This is a really easy way to prep eggs ahead of time so that they're ready to add to meals and they're flavorful. I'll give you a vegan option for this recipe in a moment. I'm adding six large eggs to a pot of hot water. Get that cooking on the stove and let it boil for about seven to eight minutes. I like to do eight minutes for this. Once they're done, I like to crack the eggs and put them under the cold water. It makes it so much easier to get the shell off and you can do as many eggs as you like. You can do more than me or less, whatever you need. So you can just prep hard boiled eggs in the fridge if you want to, or you can make them a bit more flavorful and fun. I like to slice them in half and cut them into smallish pieces. For a vegan option, you can use a quarter cup of drained pinto beans 
per boiled egg. So to replace two eggs, you can use half a cup of pinto beans to replace six eggs of this recipe. You can use one and a half cups of drained and rinsed pinto beans from a can. And those calories will be roughly the same too. Then I'm adding two tablespoons of mayonnaise in total. You can use one teaspoon of mayonnaise per boiled egg. Then I'm adding some salt and pepper, just a little bit, mix everything together, and you can store that in an airtight container in the fridge to keep it fresh. I also like to add some lime juice, you don't have to, but it adds a really nice flavor and it also helps to keep the eggs fresher. So we've already prepped six items and you'll already be able to do so much with these. For the last two items, you can either buy them at a store or you can make your own at home. I really struggle to find a gluten-free bread with ingredients that I like that I can get at the store and also a hummus that I like. So I often just make my own. Both of these items are so versatile. They can be used in so many different ways. Right now, I'm gonna show you how to make the easiest gluten-free bread. No kneading or rolling required. It's vegan. You can throw it together in five minutes before baking it. And I'll show you how to make a super tasty clean ingredient hummus at home and you can make it with or without garlic. I like to start by caramelizing some onions. This is the most important ingredient in my hummus recipe. I chop up about 400 grams of onion into fine pieces. I have this one giant onion here. It's massive, but you might need a few smaller ones to make up 400 grams. I heat a pan on the stove and add some cooking oil spray. Then I sprinkle one tablespoon of coconut sugar over the onion. You can use any kind of granulated sugar. I just like to use coconut sugar and also one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. And you can toss the onion while it cooks so that it doesn't burn. And while that's cooking, I'm squeezing the juice from some lemons to get about 40 milliliters of lemon juice. I used two and a half tiny little lemons, but you'll probably only need one medium to large lemon. And when the onions are done, you can remove them from the stove. Just make sure they're a little bit caramelized and browned. This is what's gonna add the flavor. Then I'm opening a can of chickpeas. Most cans are about 440 grams, so that's what I'm using. So now this is really important. I'm not throwing out any of the brine from the can. I'm instead using a sieve to separate the chickpeas and to get the brine from the can in the bowl. I add the chickpeas to a blender and I measure out about one third of a cup of the brine from the can. Add that to the blender too. You can discard the rest of it. And then the lemon juice, add that in, and also two tablespoons of tahini. Three tablespoons of olive oil, and then I add the caramelized onions in. You can put all of the caramelized onions in over here, or you can keep just a small amount aside to garnish the hummus with, like I have. Either works, it's just to make it look pretty at the end. So I'm keeping some aside. Then you can add some salt and pepper to taste. Then you can blend everything up. You can use a food processor if you have one, otherwise use a blender like I'm doing. And once it's smooth, you can serve it into an airtight container to keep it fresh and store it in the fridge. You can also optionally add one clove of garlic to your hummus. I leave it out, but most people like to add garlic to hummus. You can just chop up that one clove roughly before adding it to your blender. I was allergic to garlic when I was little, which I did outgrow, but I still don't feel great when I eat it, so I usually leave it out. I'm garnishing mine with that little bit of extra caramelized onion and also some pepper on top, just to make it look cute. If you don't have a super fancy blender, just blend it for longer to get it nice and smooth. I created this gluten-free bread recipe years ago to be a really easy bread to make at home. It's been on my blog for a really long time. I start by adding two cups of dry rolled oats to a bowl with half a cup of chia seeds and five tablespoons of psyllium husks. So this really helps to bind the recipe along with the chia seeds. It is safe to use psyllium husks like this. Just keep it out of reach of pets and children. And then you can add one teaspoon of fine salt. In another bowl, I'm melting some coconut oil, enough for about four tablespoons of melted oil, plus a little bit extra to grease the pan. I cover the bowl with a small plate and melt it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. I mix all of the dry ingredients together and then I add the four tablespoons of melted coconut oil to the bowl with one tablespoon of maple syrup. And lastly, I add two cups of water to the bowl, mix all of the ingredients together and we're basically done. It's that easy. You can grease a bread pan with just a little bit of extra coconut oil, just a small amount, and then pour the batter into the bread pan and smooth 
smooth out the top with the back of a spoon. I actually made a second loaf, so I just repeated all of the steps, doubled all of the ingredients to make more. Then you can place the bread in an oven and bake it for about 30 to 40 minutes. 360 degrees Fahrenheit, about 180 degrees Celsius. And after that, you can remove the bread from the pan and place it upside down on an oven tray and bake it for another 30 to 40 minutes. Once the bread is baked, you can remove it from the oven and leave it to cool for a few minutes on a cooling grid before slicing it. So this is really important to leave it to cool. If you cut it while it's too hard, it might break apart and be all sticky. It makes about 16 to 20 slices. I think it's best when the slices are quite thin, so I usually aim for about 20 slices and you can store all of the slices in an airtight container in the fridge to keep them fresh they are small but they are very filling because of the ingredients that we used they are whole grain full of fiber they've got some healthy fats in there too and they are delicious when toasted to be a little bit crispy Okay, so now we have prepped all of our core ingredients I will link a grocery shopping list below for you to go along with this video So how do we use all of these core ingredients to build healthy meals throughout the week? I'm going to show you exactly how to do that using three groups of food. Core ingredients, ready to go ingredients and fresh ingredients. And if you're wondering what those are, I'll quickly explain. Core ingredients are foods you typically think of when you think meal prep. They're foods that you need to prep ahead of time for quick meals on the day, and they're foods that keep well when prepared. Examples would be all of the core ingredients that we just prepped, like brown rice, chicken, roasted vegetables. Ready to go ingredients are usually pantry staples or items that you keep in the fridge. Most often you'd get them pre-made or buy them straight from the store. They usually keep well and don't really need prepping. Examples could be peanut butter, salad dressing, olive oil, butter, cream cheese, cheese, or even hummus or bread if you get yours from the store and you don't make it at home. Occasionally, I like to prep a ready-to-go ingredient myself, like salad dressing. Here I'm squeezing some fresh lemons and I'm mixing a quarter cup of that with half a cup of olive oil to use over my meals for the next few days. I add salt and pepper too. It's just an extra time saver, but it's not completely necessary. And then fresh items would be foods that don't keep well or that are not really suited to being prepped. Or alternatively, they can be prepared within a few minutes on the day. Examples of a fresh item could be adding a few cucumber slices or leafy greens or some steamed broccoli to an otherwise prepped meal or some banana slices to your otherwise prepped breakfast. It's not that you can't prep these items, but generally they don't keep as well unless they've been prepped in a very specific way. Sometimes I like to pre-wash leafy greens if they come quite dirty and I find that if I prepare this it really helps me to save a lot of time every day when I want to throw a quick salad together. If I'm doing this sometimes I even grate a carrot to add to my salad greens. Just if you do this just make sure you let it all dry really well before you store it again so that it doesn't go soggy. So after going over the three groups of food of flexible meal prep, you'll now start to see why our eight core ingredients needed to be prepped. And just with those eight items, we've already got so many options of meals that we can make. But if you add some additional fresh or ready to go ingredients, you can increase the meal options exponentially. So it feels like a fresh meal and not something that you made a week ago. Okay, so now for the fun part. I'm gonna show you exactly how to build nutritious meals for yourself using these ingredients. There's so many different ways you can use these ingredients. I'm gonna be showing you 10 different meal ideas. I'll be showing you examples for breakfast, lunches, dinners, and snacks. So let's get started with the first meal. I love this one for a quick healthy lunch or a dinner. I'm adding some of the prepped brown rice to a bowl. It actually works with or without the brown rice or you can even use quinoa instead. Then I'm adding some of those leafy greens that are pre-washed, some of the crispy roasted black beans, some of the vinegar roasted tomatoes, some of the caramelized onion hummus, and also some of that salad dressing that I made 
adding that over the rice and over the greens mix. You don't have to pre-prep that. You can just use a squeeze of lemon or lime juice and then add some olive oil. We're getting some whole carbs and fiber from the brown rice, the tomatoes, the hummus and the black beans, and getting some protein from the hummus and the black beans too and the olive oil adds some healthy fats to the meal. So it's a really nice balanced meal that's ready in under five minutes. This is a fun take on eggs and toast for breakfast or an egg salad sandwich for lunch. It also makes a quick dinner. I like to toast two slices of the oat and chia toaster bread. I like to toast this bread on the long setting to get the edges nice and crispy. Then I add some of the mayo eggs straight from the container on top, enough for one to two eggs or as much as you like. You can also now use the vegan pinto bean option instead of the eggs. Then I add some of the roasted pepper and onion mix on top. Here I'm just using it as a topping. It adds so much flavor and also sneaks some veggies in there. And then totally optional, I'm adding some microgreens that I had in the fridge on top. You can use some of the pre-washed greens if you did that or just some baby spinach or you can leave it out. So that's also a really nicely balanced meal. This one is a great lunch or dinner and it's really quick too. The rice in the salad bowl is totally optional. It works great with or without it and you can add however much you like based on how hungry you are. That's another great thing about flexible meal prep. You can play with portion sizes. Then I'm adding some of the chicken. You can also use the baked tofu for the vegan option if you made that. Then I'm adding some of the leafy greens or you can just add some baby spinach on the day, some of the roasted onion and pepper, and then some of the caramelized onion hummus. Then I'm adding some of that dressing that I made over the rice and the greens. Again, you can use olive oil and a fresh squeeze of lemon or lime juice on the day. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorites right now. I'll just say that I've had it a lot this week and it does not disappoint. And I have put all of these meals together for you guys to be balanced with all of the food groups. They pretty much all contain some sort of protein, whole carb, healthy fat, and fiber combination. I like to have this one for a quick lunch or a savory breakfast or even a snack. I'm toasting two slices of the oat and chia bread and for any of these toast recipes, you can use any kind of bread you like. I'm adding some of the caramelized onion hummus on top. It tastes really good with this toast and it's amazing with some of the roasted onion and pepper on top. So I'm adding that on top. It's really easy to create a balanced meal if you have the items pre-prepped. And this is not necessary, it's totally optional. I added a small drizzle of olive oil and a few microgreens. It just feels really gourmet with those little touches. <laughs> you can also break up some greens or some baby spinach on top or just leave the greens out. And I also added some black pepper on top. So this one makes a really great lunch or dinner. I'm adding some of the brown rice to a bowl again. It also works really nicely with quinoa if you use that instead. And it gives it some variation in terms of flavor. Then I'm adding some of the pre-washed greens and some of the mayo eggs. I used about a third of what I'd prepped for the eggs. So that's about two eggs in total. You can use the vegan pinto bean option now instead of the egg. Some of the roasted onion and pepper. Then this is optional. I added some fresh cucumber slices. This would be an example of adding a fresh item to your otherwise pre-prepped meal made up of mostly core ingredients. And then I'm adding some of my olive oil and lemon juice dressing and that's it. This one's very, very yummy and it's very filling too. This one makes a great snack, a savory breakfast or even a quick lunch. I'm adding two slices of my oat and chia bread to a toaster and then I'm topping that with some cream cheese. I use a vegan cashew milk cheese. You can use a regular one or a plant-based cream cheese, up to you. And the cream cheese would be an example of a ready-to-go item that you could just grab out of the fridge and add to your meal. Then I'm adding some of the vinegar roasted tomatoes on top of that. And this is not necessary for the meal, but I drizzled a little bit of olive oil on it too and also added some microgreens that I still had in the fridge and a bit of black pepper. And you can have whatever serving size you like of this or any of the meals that I'm sharing with you. Just play with the portions to suit you. I 
I've been loving to have this one for a dinner or a lunch. I add some of the brown rice to a bowl with some of the leafy greens again that I pre-washed and then I'm adding some of the roasted onion and bell pepper again and then some of the crispy spicy black beans. Oh my gosh, I love these. I love these roasted black beans. They're so delicious. Already that is a really great combination. Now I'm adding an optional extra, some fresh avocado slices and then I'm adding some of the olive oil and lemon juice again. I like to add that all over the rice and the greens and I'm topping that off with a bit of salt and pepper. The flavor in this really comes from the roasted onion and pepper and also the black beans. This whole meal is so quick to make, you can throw it together in three minutes. This one is a really great lunch, a snack, a breakfast, even a super quick dinner. I'm toasting some of the oat and chia bread and then afterwards I'm topping it with some fresh avocado slices. Then I'm adding some of the vinegar roasted tomatoes on top and some of the crispy roasted spicy black beans. So good already, okay. Then this is optional. I'm breaking up some of the leafy greens and adding them on top. It's definitely not your average avocado toast, I'll just say that. So unlike the other meals where we used a whole lot of the prepped ingredients, for this one we're only using the oat and chia toaster bread. And that's what's so great about flexible meal prep is you can take even just one prepped item and you can add anything else you might have in the fridge or the pantry. This one is a really quick and classic breakfast, lunch or snack. I toast two slices of the bread and when that's ready, I add some peanut butter on the top. The peanut butter is a really great ready to go item and it adds some healthy fats and protein. And then what I like to do is add some banana slices on top, a great fresh item that you can just throw on there in the moment. And I also added a tiny drizzle of maple syrup and a sprinkle of cinnamon. Those are great ready to go items as well. We're using the brown rice again with this one, as well as the salt and pepper vinegar chicken and the vinegar roasted tomatoes and yeah. So I am actually adding some fresh broccoli to this. I'm just rinsing that and then letting it steam for 10 minutes. It's so quick. You can also steam broccoli in the microwave for two to four minutes with just a little bit of water, which is an even quicker option to steam it. And while that's steaming, I'm adding some brown rice to a bowl, as well as some of the chicken. You can use the tofu instead if you made the vegan option, and then also some of the vinegar roasted tomatoes. I cover this with a plate and heat it in the microwave really quickly. Another option is to throw all of this into a nonstick frying pan and heat it on the stove quickly. I often do this and it's really easy. All you have to do is add a small amount of cooking oil spray to the pan before you heat it. And once everything is heated and the broccoli is ready, you can add it to the bowl. You could also steam zucchini or green beans instead of the broccoli and then I like to drizzle everything with the salad dressing that I made the olive oil and the lemon juice I add most of it to the rice and then just a little bit everywhere else too and I add some salt and pepper another thing that's really great about this flexible meal prep is that you can heat any of the items or eat them just as they are and you can also heat some of them and leave other ones fresh you can mix and match it and adding the broccoli is a really great example of adding a fresh ingredient to a meal made up of your core ingredients your already pre-prepped ingredients I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and these meal prepping ideas. I'm going to link below a meal prepping playlist with all of my meal prep videos in it. I'm also going to be linking below my meal prep ebook, which has got four full weeks of meal prep, meal plans, loads of meal prepping recipes. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in my next video.